You have now learned how to build a logistic regression model and evaluate the result through the choice of a cutoff. Before finishing this chapter, I'd like to make two additional remarks. The first remark relates to the choice of an optimal cutoff value, and the second one is a more general remark on logistic regression models. Let's have a look at how classification accuracy changes with different cutoff values for our full logistic regression model. There is a steep increase of the accuracy until a cutoff for around 25%. After that, there is a slight increase until a cutoff of 51%, and for all cutoffs greater than 51%, the accuracy doesn't change anymore. It is important to stress that the increasing nature of accuracy as the cutoff increases is a very typical result for credit risk modeling, or in general, any kind of logistic regression model with unbalanced group, which can be way more ones than zeros, or the other way around. Looking at the accuracy alone, you would be tempted to use a cutoff value of over 51% here, as it leads to the best accuracy. As shown before, however, the high accuracy is only due to the fact uh, that for a cutoff greater than 51%, all cases are classified as non-defaults. Now, let's have a look at sensitivity and specificity. Unlike accuracy, the strictly increasing nature for specificity and strictly decreasing nature for sensitivity apply in general. Taking a cutoff of zero, all cases will be classified as defaults, leading to a sensitivity of 100%, but a specificity of zero. At the other extreme, taking a cutoff of 1, all cases will be classified as non-defaults, leading to a specificity of 100%, but a sensitivity of 0. This trade-off between sensitivity and specificity always exists. We'll get back to the specification of a cutoff in the fourth chapter of this course. To finalize this chapter, I would like to mention that the logistic regression model we've used up to now is also known as the logistic regression mo model with a logit link, which is the default in R, but can also be written using link equal to logit. Using the expression at the bottom of the slide, you can then compute the probability of default. Alternatives exist, such as the probit and the clog log link fun functions. Although I won't discuss these variations in detail, they're worth mentioning. As shown here, Negative parameter estimates for these models also lead to a decrease in default probability and positive parameter estimates to an increase in default probability. However, the function describing the relationship between the parameter estimates and the actual probabilities of default changes and is slightly more complex. Nonetheless, predictions are still very easy to obtain using R. Now, let's finish this chapter with some exercises.